All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the Gym S. Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rokakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Bahashim is in the name, Raka is spirit, Kodash is holy, Akyam is brothers, Akwath is sisters, Shalawam means peace, and Yashar Allah is Israel in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. Now I want to go into a lesson through the spirit. All right, it's Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 15, and it reads, Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey, and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. All right, because we live in a world where truth is not valued as it should be. All right, righteousness is not valued as it should be. All right, and as we get closer to the end, the currency, the value of truth is going to increase. All right, this is why the scriptures talk about a famine of the word. All right, because right now people enjoy lies because lies are comfortable until the truth washes away those lies. Right now, people still have distractions, so they're kept from the, the harsh reality of truth, all right, which is going to play out in judgment. All right, real quick. This is Amos chapter 9. Salakia, Amos chapter 8 and verse 11, and it reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. All right. And the words of the Lord, they are true. OK, because we live in a world where truth is um, suppressed. All right. That's the best way I can put it. You know what you call news is not news. It's a narrative. All right. When truth comes out, it's condemned. It's outcasted because it doesn't fit the agenda of the present power structure. All right. You see that playing out on a small level with uh, this guy, Andrew Tate. All right. Where if you speak a little truth, you're demonized, regardless of if what you speak is true or not. That's why it says truth faileth in the society. All right. Real quick, this is Isaiah chapter five and verse 20. And that's why to have this truth, to have a ability to speak truth and allow the spirit of the Lord to have free course is a very valuable gift from Yahweh Bashim Shai. Because most people are scared to speak truth. They're scared of what's going to happen at their job. They're scared of what their family's going to think of them. They're scared of what their, their wife is going to think of them. Their friends in this world. They're scared of what they're going to think of them if they speak truth. So they conceal a matter. All right. This is Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. All right. And that's because we live in a world where darkness is put forth as light and light is put forth as darkness. All right. And that's why the Lord said this. This is John chapter three and verse 19. And it reads. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. See, Esau has turned the world into a buffet of wickedness. You know, the scriptures say that he turned the world into a wilderness. But how has he done that? He has he has glorified wickedness. He has propped wickedness and vanity up as something to be admired and uh, sought after. So much so that when truth is presented, all right, it's a witness against most people in this world because, again, they love darkness rather than light. Even at your job, you notice people beat around the bush. They don't deal with truth, even on small matters. How much more so the matters dealing with the affairs of the earth? And you see, uh, and we look at it from the spirit, you know, the red pill movement, 
basically took parts of the truth and monetized it, right? You know, a lot of these guys like Andrew Tate got famous off of speaking certain things that go, really go back to the scriptures. And they monetized their platforms and they became extremely successful through those endeavors. You know, some of those guys were already uh, successful concerning money already. And they just used parts of the truth to monetize and increase their own wealth. Well, the Lord is dissolving that whole situation. All right. Because this is going to be the, the condemnation of truth. Now, what they have is a small portion compared to what brothers beginning with our apostles on down bring out. But it shows you an example of how truth faileth in this society. And you can see that from the worldview, the world stage, and you can see that on an individual level. Where people refuse to be honest and to bring out truth because of what it may do to them. And that's why the scriptures talk about a gift destroying the heart. All right. Matter of fact, let's go here. This is Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart. And when you go into that word gift, it really goes into bribes. Because what Esau gives the, the so-called leaders of our people are basically bribes by another name. For example, if, if uh, LeBron James gets a contract for a certain amount of money, all right, there are stipulations in that contract where basically he doesn't have free course to speak truth without uh without restraint without consequence because ultimately those bribes destroy the mind all right they destroy the ability to speak freely and this is why the lord has reserved unto himself a complete number of men who will not bend the knee to baal who are going to tell our people that the motb is the c hip all right the RFID C hip is the MOTB. And you're going to have men, all right, beginning with our apostles on down, who are going to bring this information out, regardless of the consequence on their personal, um, on, their, on a personal level. Whereas the other side of this is that most of our people refuse to bring out truth because of what they may lose in this life. Let's go here. I want to go here real quick. This is Matthew 11 and 29, and it reads, you know what? Let's go to 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, our people are looking for rest in all the wrong places. And what Esau does is he basically gives them a, a mirage, you know, a temporary comfort in exchange for their obedience and their silence. And this is why truth becomes so valuable, because, again, the mouths of our people, especially the ones who have the biggest platforms, are stopped because they receive bribes. They've received those consolations. Whereas the Lord said, look, if you're heavy laden, all right, rest with us, rest with with the understanding of Yahweh Shema Ushai. But in order to do that, you have to take hold of truth and not just hold on to it, but declare it. The Lord said, you are my witnesses. Matter of fact, let's go there. And what does a witness do? They testify. They give the full testimony. All right. This is Isaiah 43 and 10. And, and as we get closer to the end, you're going to find out that the value of being able to speak truth freely has no price. That your ability to speak truth freely to follow after the truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemal Shai without a care for what may happen to you personally. All right, because you trust Yahweh by Shemal Shai, that is a priceless gift whose value will only increase as we go, get closer to the end. Because whereas most people suppress truth to protect their own personal life, they don't win at the end of this anyway. They believe they do. They're deceived by the idea that they do, but they don't ultimately win because they refuse to give the uh, the true testimony. And most of them are too blind to see it anyway. But what did the Lord say about those who understand truth? This is Isaiah 43 and 10. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no power formed, neither shall there be after me. 
And that only comes by the gift of faith that the Lord gives you. Your ability to speak truth freely. You know, for brothers who go out on the highways and hedges week in and week out, that's a gift. And everybody isn't able to do that. Contrary to popular belief, as the scriptures say, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And most of our people are, are blind to these facts. They don't understand what's actually happening in the earth. Neither can they declare it. Only a remnant of our people can actually declare truth. All right. Lord, will we be a part of that number? All right. Real quick. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And verse, verse 22, all right, and it reads, for he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman. Likewise, right? Likewise, also he that is called being free is Hamashiach's servant. You are bought with the price. Be not ye the servants of men, all right? So look, the Lord bought us with a price to be his freeman. In what aspect we can freely speak truth? As the scriptures say, ye, ye know the truth and the truth has made you free. That's, there's a, a liberty, there's a, a freedom that comes with not only holding fast to truth, but not caring about the same things that the world cares about. Because it frees you from those, those uh, perceived consequences. You know, most people are afraid to be themselves because they may lose their job. You know, they're scared to speak truth because of what may happen to them personally. But the Lord has put the spirit on the elect to not care about none of those things. That's a gift. That's not of that's not of themselves per se. All right. But the Lord is saying again in first Corinthians seven and twenty two. For he that is called the Lord being a servant is the Lord's freeman. So you walk around with a freedom that most people on the earth don't have. Even those who are rich, especially those who are super rich in this world. They're closely monitored. Those ones that Esau gives huge platforms to, they're, they're closely monitored. Those who have influence in this society, they're closely monitored because Esau knows how much influence, uh, it, how, how important influence is. And that's why we're in a time through the spirit where truth is becoming more and more priceless. This truth is becoming more and more priceless. Because who can declare this? Who can see this and say this is true? So when it begins to play out, all right, they're going to search for those who were speaking this. And in a society that's been turned upside down where darkness is perceived as light and light is perceived as darkness. When that covering cast is removed, the ones who are who look like the heroes are going to be found out to be villains. All right. Namely, the elites of Esau Edom. All right. Esau is a nation of people beginning with their elites. I'll put it that way. They're going to be found to be liars. Whereas the faith of the elect is going to be confirmed. And even now, the world is witnessing the beginning of the kingdom of heaven because truth. Matter of fact, let's get that. This is Psalms chapter 85 and verse 10. And it reads, mercy and truth are met together. So for you to have this truth is the Lord giving you mercy. Whether you can receive that or not, that's the truth. All right, because in a world full of lies, your ability to hold on and cleave to the truth is a gift within itself. Especially when you're being uh, bombarded with lies continuously. The moment you leave your door, even in your own home. You may watch a YouTube video with a brother or trying to learn something about what's going on in the world and they'll put an ad on it with some kind of deception. So for, your, your, for you to have the ability to cleave on the truth is a mercy unto you from Yahweh Bashim al Shai. For you to be able to not only hear the truth but declare it is an even bigger mercy to, uh, from Yahweh Bashim al Shai to you. Because we're in a time where truth to the naked eye, to the natural man, it seems to have no value. To the natural person, to the, the carnal man, it seems to have no value. Yet it's the most priceless possession you could have on the face of the earth at this point. 
the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Because even the knowledge of these whistleblowers can only take you but so far. They can tell you World War III is coming, but they can't tell you why. They can tell you economic collapse is coming, but they can't tell you why. And what's the end goal? Let's go here. Ecclesiastes 3 and 23 reads, Be not curious in unnecessary matters, for more things are showed unto thee than men understand. You understand the truth. Even being able to declare the truth is a gift because most people are scared to, to say what they believe is true, even if it ain't true. They're scared to say what they believe is true for the consequence of their personal life. Which shows you the type of society we live in where truth does not have free course. And as the judge is, so are the people. Which means they made lies their refuge. All right. This is Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 15. And it reads, because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. This is why when our apostles go out, when brothers go out, people hear this word and they keep walking. Because they believe that their lies are going to protect them from what's coming. They believe the things that they hold fast to are going to protect them in these last days. And that what brothers are saying is something that they don't have to believe in. Therefore, it won't happen. And that's the delusion of being in a society that tells you lies and never gives you a confirmed truth. Is that you believe that lies will keep you safe. Your opinion will keep you safe. That's the common mindset of the world. All right. Now, continuing, it says this 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. I'm going to jump down to verse 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. Just because these people don't cleave to the truth don't mean it won't happen. All right. Just because they've made lies their refuge, it doesn't mean they're going to be protected by those lies. And that's what they believe. You got this new age thought where people believe they can manifest anything if they just, you know, think about it every day and think about it consistently. You're not going to manifest your way out of what the Lord is about to bring upon the earth. You're not going to be able to stick your head in the sand and avoid what the Lord is about to do on the earth. That's the reality that most people are attempting to avoid. And that's why to have this truth now is extremely, man, it's a priceless gift. To be able to declare it without care for consequence is an extremely valuable gift. Because we live in a world that does not respect or value truth. That is the reality. Things have been turned upside down and people love lies because it makes them feel good, but it won't help them avoid what the Lord's about to do in the earth. Truth is going to hit most people like a brick wall, but for you, you've been given it through the mercy of the Lord. Yet the scriptures say, even though you're the Lord's servant, you're a freeman. Why is that? This is John 8 and 32, and it reads. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So you've been freed from the, the bondage. That Esau holds most people to because you got people who won't speak truth because of a thirty, forty thousand dollar job. Or some friends that they got that they think are their friends that really aren't their friends. You got people who will, who will toe the line for Esau. For the for the crumbs off his table, man. And that's why this truth is so valuable and to understand it is even more valuable for you because it's an exercise of the Lord's mercy to give you the spirit to declare truth, to hear truth, to receive it, to follow after it in a world where lies have been told to you. 
the majority of your life. Think about that. The majority of your life you've been lied to. And the Lord has given you the ability to receive truth over all of those years of indoctrination. Not only to believe, but to declare it, to be willing to be made a fool in the sight of fools. That is a gift. And you've been set free from the bondage, the mortal thoughts of this world, where most people will hear this and say that it's true, but they may say it secretly. Without the courage to declare it openly. Or to cleave to it. That's a gift. All right. So I just want to go into that through the spirit. All right. With that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yashar Allah, and the sincere salutation to Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.